Good evening, good evening, everybody. Um, yes, here we are once again, teachings with Lali. I'm very excited to be back. I know it's been a while, so I've been away for quite um, a couple of weeks and on um, medical rest, but here we are, we're back again. I'm very excited that we have resumed the teachings with Lale. I've actually missed engaging with everybody. I've missed having talks with everyone. So good evening once again, we are having teachings with Lale and we're gonna look at a very key and important subject for today. But before we start that, let's resume with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We honor you even in this day, oh God. We thank you that you are God and that you are King and that there is no other God besides you, Lord. Father, I pray that everything that comes out of my mouth, Lord, let it be guided by you, Holy Spirit, and you put the right words even in my lips. And Lord, I thank you that indeed this is the day that you have made and that I shall rejoice and be glad in it. And of course, Lord, we are dedicating it unto you in the mightiest name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Great, everyone. Sure, it's so good to be back. It's been a while. Um, that we've had actually teachings with Lali and I'm so glad that we now got an opportunity to actually be able to run with these particular teachings. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, today we're going to share on a very, very important subject um, that is also very close to my heart. The subject that speaks to um, personal growth and development. But let's start right from the beginning. This is again, welcome teachings with Lali. And these particular teachings with these kingdom principle teachings. So we begin to teach about, um, we begin to teach about the kingdom principles. This is now based on the scripture of Hosea chapter four, verse six. Um, that says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge, and because you have rejected knowledge, um, I also reject you as my priest, and because you have ignored the law of the Lord, I will also ignore your children. So this is a very good um, teaching that we are going to speak about today, and welcome once again. And um, just to be able to give a background about these particular teachings is that um, as part and parcel of the introduction, these teachings are based on how um, I found that even within my life, sometimes you feel like you're going around in circles and you are not finding solutions. So what these teachings are able to bring is that it is able to bring the knowledge of God. And here it talks about take away ignorance. That's when darkness and the enemy is able to thrive based on ignorance. But when the light of God begins to shine, the ignorance then goes away. And you then begin to start operating in the light of God. And I always refer, I know I'm going through this introduction because I go through it each and every single teaching. I don't go through it in detail. And when you find time, you can just be able to read what I've written here. But it's also based on the scripture of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, where God creates and says, let there be light. And then there was light. So whenever there is light, darkness cannot be able to rule. Because where light exists, they can never be darkness. So the two cannot be able to coexist. So during the day, there's always a sun that shines through and there's always light that comes through. And in the night, you would not be able to find the sun that shines in the night, but you find the moon that is able to be there to shine some light if you are finding it to be a full moon like what it is um, today and in the last couple of days. So where darkness is, where there is light, there could never be darkness. And I hope through these teachings, I'm actually able to share some form of light that is able to come through. And again, we gaze based it on one of my very favorite scriptures, which is found in the book of Ezra, chapter 10, verse 4. It says, You are that um, it says, Arise, for this matter concerns you. 
we are with you, be strong and be able to do it, you know. And with this, I am saying you are the director of the movie of your life. So in other words, God has put you in charge of it. You then need to be able to take hold of it and be able to run with it. And there you are going to be able to have the backing which comes through from Christ. Let's be able to um, link on what our previous class was. So the previous class, we were talking about kingdom um, finance principles being the faith. Faith is the one that is a um, currency of heaven when it comes through to, um, to, to, to finance or so to anything that you need a breakthrough in your life, faith plays a key role. So you will be able to look on YouTube that particular teaching that I had then, but just to summarize what that class or what that teaching was all about, we discussed and talk about faith and we defined faith and what it is and what it is used for. And um, according to the, um, the definition that I was able to get, it talks about the Greek word used most in the New Testament is that of faith, which is um, pistis. It indicates the belief and the conviction of the complementary idea to trust. Faith is, is, is a mere intellectual stance, but a belief that leads to action. So in other words, actions are also coordinated even through um, faith. And we also discussed the last time in terms of um, faith as a kingdom principles. I did share what my opinion in terms of faith, what it is and what the, 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 the spiritual part of it is able to cover that indeed we are spiritual beings. So faith is being optimistic, according to me, it's being hopeful, being confident of what the future holds, positive thinking, which is then able to attract positive energy, um, surrendering to, some people call it a higher power, um, surrendering everything that you have to the power which we believe it comes from the creator himself. And also we talked about how faith is about trust and belief and faith overrides the facts. So in other words, where faith exists, facts cannot be able to coexist at the very same time. And we also spoke and looked at the few examples that talks to faith. We looked at the children of Israel. We looked at a couple of books on how they had faith in God as they walked out of Egypt and into the wilderness. They trust and believed in God. We also talked about how Sarah was not able to conceive Isaac outside of actually having faith. Because if you read in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 12, it said Sarah was able to conceive Isaac through faith. We also learned about the father of faith, which is Abraham. And we spoke there about um, how Abraham trusted and believed in God, that this very one son that he was expecting from God, from coming from Sarah, which is Isaac, it's a very son that the Lord just said, come and be able to sacrifice this one. And he believed and had faith that God was going to be able to supply. Um, that he wouldn't be able to, to, to sacrifice his son. And that's the amount of faith that Abraham was able to have on God. And we read quite a few scriptures and you can go back to that teaching because it was actually very detailed. But part of what I, we also included was that of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. It says, all these people, so the book of Hebrews, we also dwelt on it and say, you can go read it in your own time. It actually speaks about faith. And it says all these people, so it mentions quite a number of people who believed and had faith in God and how um, those things were able to come through and come to pass with them. And it says all these people were still living by faith when they died, right? They still continued their faith. Some of them did not receive, right? This is the sum that I'm putting in there. They said they did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners in, a, in the strangers on earth. So in other words, there were people who were actually not believing. Seeing these things at the distance, they, they didn't necessarily believe and they were not able to conceive such things. But if we are able to have faith, then you are able to conceive such things. We also spoke about to, to, to you know, to, to access your money in a foreign land, you need to be able to change it into that particular currency. So, you know, sometimes as soon as you land in a foreign 
um, land or in a different country, you need to have a foreign exchange where you actually can be able to change your money into that currency. And then you are able to access everything that you want to be able to buy within that, 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 that particular um, country. We spoke about how faith then works like that. Um, if you've missed out on the class, you can be able to catch up on it um, in our YouTube channel that is called Teachings with Lale. You can be able to exit it from there. So today's shooting is very, very exciting. So um, when compiling all of this, then I decided to have, make it to have two parts, okay? Um, the ones that are great out here on the screen is that we've already come covered. Kingdom principles defined basic fundamentals of salvation, all of these teachings are available on YouTube in case you have missed any one of these classes. Dealing with curses, soul ties, stone, gates, altars, dealing with uh, spiritual bloodline foundations, understanding personal and family spiritual mapping, hearing the voice of God, kingdom finance principles, being wealth creation itself. And the last teaching that we did was faith, the currency of heaven. And today we're gonna have a two part um, teachings that are talking to discovering your purpose. So I divided it into two because I didn't wanna really cloud it into one teaching otherwise it would have taken us long because our agreement here i would like us to keep it to an hour at most an hour and a half in terms of these particular teachings so today we're going to talk about discovering your purpose what is still to come we're still going to be talking about the power of mentorship and coaching and the very last part hopefully we'll be able to do it this year still operating from the courts of heaven before then we are going to move then into volume two of these teachings with Lale. Then after we've done this, we would have completed the volume one. And um, so today we're gonna talk about discovering your purpose, which is one of the key, I think, and the most important thing that you would need to establish um, in one's life. So what is it that we're gonna cover in this particular class? So yes, we are on class number 10. I can't believe that we've done um, so many classes. So we are on class number 10, part one. Chances are we would have done to 13 to 14 classes, but some of them had two parts to it. So this is part number 10, class number 10, part one. We are going to talk about understanding your purpose. We're gonna define it. We're gonna say that you are actually born with a purpose, fulfilling your purpose and also building, building your self image. And then we conclude. And then part two, you will see, we'll start talking to various, um, characteristics or characters that you actually need to actually look at in understanding your purpose even better. All right, let's have a look as usual. Yes, so discovering your purpose. I just love this picture when I came across it because it was actually talking about what we're about to engage on. So discovering your purpose defined, I always love definitions, um, especially reference definitions. So here we are talking about purpose. What is it? What is it? What's purpose and why is it that we need to know about it and what does it talk about? So we know that the object towards which, okay, so this is the definition that you find from your dictionary. It says, what is purpose? Purpose is the object towards which one strives or for which something exists or an aim for a goal. So in other words, you are aiming to have something, you are aiming to be able to find purpose into something that you are actually doing. The other definition that I loved, it actually came from uh, McMill Dictionary. It talks about purpose, what is purpose? Purpose is an aim that someone wants to achieve, an aim or a meaning of life. And that's how they were able to define it. And I pulled these particular definitions on purpose because they link and they talk to the direction that I want us to actually be able to go today. All right, so I always bring my own personal opinion on how I'm able to define what I think purpose is. So in my opinion, purpose is finding the meaning of life, you know. Um, I always call it also, it's linked with some form of destiny. Finding the meaning of life, finding why do you exist and what is it that you are all about? What is it that you, you, you have been created? And you will see that as I'm continuing with my definitions are covering you as a human being, being a three apartheid being, that you are a spirit, you have a soul and you live in the body. So purpose actually covers all of that 
in my own definition. Your birth on earth, you are talking to your physical part and your physical being, you being here on earth. So you also need to find out what is my purpose while I'm still here on earth because it's your bigger part of life that you are living here on earth to be able to fulfill then your purpose. Um, I also think there is also a kingdom fulfillment um, which talks to um, the creator's purpose. So in other words, um, what is it that you were created to be here on this earth for? That's when you start and you begin to fulfill that which you have been called for in terms of your um, kingdom mandate is what I would call it. So those are my own opinion in terms of what we define purpose to be. What is it that you've been called to be able to do? What is it that is your destiny? What is it that you need to fulfill while you are here on earth? And even I believe when you are done here on earth, and you continue because there is life after death of this physical body. Life then continues then afterwards, you know. But your biggest purpose is what you need to be able to fulfill while you are still here, carrying your, your body, still carrying your soul and carrying your spirit. And so I begin to ask myself to say, okay, how can we be able to define this even further? I ask myself, what is the existence of man? Why does man exist? And here, men, I, I mean it for both male and female. So it's not characterized by gender, but it's about a human being. Why is it that we do exist here on earth? And then I found one of my favorite scriptures that um, in Genesis chapter one, verse 26 to 28, actually talks about um, the creation of man and how man was able to be made. So this is now on the sixth day when God had created everything and other people cre call it that he'd created the garden, when the creator has made then the garden, on the sixth day, he decides then to create man. And what is it that he talks about is he's creating this man. He says, let us make man in our life, um, in our image and in our likeness, right? So in other words, you as men, when you are created here, you are created in God's image and in his likeness. And you will see that as he has created everything else that is here on the earth, the very last creation that he does before he enters the day of rest is the creation of man. God then begins then to create man and he creates man in his own image and in his own likeness. And as he does that, he creates them to say rule over the universe. So in other words, rule over this particular universe. And he talks to the sea. He says, rule over the fish in the sea, um, the earth um, or the birds in the skies, which is the heaven and the earth, the cattle and the land and every creeping thing that is in the land. So in other words, man now begins to be a creature that is above any other creation that God has made on this particular earth or creation that is existing in this particular garden is how people, some people will be able to define it. He now has a rulership over these particular things. And what does that mean? It means man has got now an upper hand because now he's made in the likeness and in the image of God. You begin to, to rule over these particular spheres as how God has ruled. That is why you will find men being able to travel to the moon and that area we call it the galaxy where the moon exists and where the sun is and where the planet actually exists you know and man is able to figure out things to be able to get there because it is under your rulership and it is under you to be able to 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 run with it so also, even in the seas, you get people who are um, divers, you know, who dive deep into the seas and discover mysteries that are sitting there in the seas and, you know, and all of those things. It's because it's been given to man. It's under the rulership of man. And hence, all these ideas and everything, it is a, a, a God-given talent that God is able to give through to you. Also, as well as on earth, what is it that God is then able to give you? Even on earth, you still have dominion because you are able to build, you are even able to blast, to be able to get different types of stones and discover the minerals that, that God has, able, has been able to put here on earth. You are able to blast and dig out for gold and everything. So this is the rulership that you begin to have. Now this is you, the physical being, being existent here. And you also have a spirit, so there is a spiritual part of it because you are a pre-appointed being. So there's a spiritual part of it that you also fulfill whilst you are still having this relationship and dominion that then you are able to have. 
And um, he then begins to define as you are going into um, this, um, I think 27 into 28, he says, let us make them male and female. Now he starts defining because all of this that he was giving, he was saying it without giving it a gender to say, now you are male and female. You were just men that you were being created with. Um, some scholars perceive it to be, this is the spiritual part that was being created, which does not necessarily have that particular gender. And when it comes through to male and female, it says, Male and feeling, we begin then to be able to make them. So now he begins to define the gender of these people that we want them to be able to exist here. And over and above that, he says, so this is Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Within them, verse 28, he begins to say, um, he blesses them. So he begins to give a blessing over these creatures that he has created, which are human beings, which is now men that he has created here on this particular earth. He says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. So in other words, he gives you the authorization while you are still here on earth to say, this is what I want you to be able to fulfill. Be fruitful. So in other words, be able to multiply because he is a God of multiplication. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and, and subdue it. So in other words, he's able to say, be able to take control while you are still here and dominating here on this earth. And one of the key um, things that I also liked is that God created mankind as a special species. So now you are this special species that is above even the animals that you are able to get. He creates this species that is above animals and having at least some form of qualities of God. So within us, you begin to have the form of qualities that represents the creator. And and, and he says that God appoints humans as a steward of his creation. So he makes up all of these things. He creates the universe. He makes the sun. He makes the, earth, the moon. He makes the stars. He makes the earth. He makes, you know, trees, wind. He creates all these things and he makes us to be steward of this particular creation. So I'm going somewhere and I hope you are able to follow me as I'm laying down the foundation of understanding your purpose is to also understand where it actually began and what is the meaning of you in this existence here. So some other people will argue and say, oh, well, I don't believe that there is a God. I don't believe that there is a higher power. I don't believe that there is this. I don't believe that is that. But this is the particular principle and the kingdom mandate principle that has been set here on this particular earth, but it works whether you believe it or not. Whether you believe that there is a sun out there, there is no sun out there, the sun continues to shine because the creator has made it to be there. So argue as much as you want to argue, but I believe strongly that if you look in this book of Genesis 1, 26 to 28, you begin to understand why man exists. And you begin then to understand what is it that is your purpose. And we'll look just at a few examples of, of, of what, we, what we have. So this is now the slide that I define to say you are actually born with a purpose. And this is what I strongly believe that every single person that is born here on this particular earth, you are born with a purpose and you are born to be able to fulfill that particular purpose and that particular mandate that you were born with. And when you are born with this particular purpose, you are also born with the talent that can be able to keep you and be able to sustain you as you are here on this particular earth. This particular talent that is able to keep you, that is able to sustain you, it's your purpose, it's your talent. And you will see when we are towards the end of this particular teaching, you will see how we can link it up with your career, with the direction that you are going in, even within your life, with your growth and everything like that, how these are actually interlinked and they begin to be able to speak that which you begin to be able to find. So finding your purpose is one of the key and the most important things that I think everyone should begin to understand even from a very young age. You know, you'll find parents say, oh, but we knew that this one was gonna be in arts, you know, because um, 
it's either from a very young age she loved painting or she loved singing or he or she um, was a dancer or anything like that. They could actually identify the gift that you have before you even go to school and decide this is the career that I want. That is something that you are born with and you are born with inside of you. And even before you go to school and you decide on a career. You sometimes find yourself in a career to say, okay, I was actually in this particular career because I wanted to be able to have some form of money to be able to sustain. But at some stage you find it boring. You'll find people who are changing their careers in between to say, actually, it's my parents that wanted me to study law or I thought maybe law would be interesting, but really deep down in my heart, I really didn't want to be able to do law. So guess what? After I've worked a couple of years like this, I began then to change and did something that spoke to me. So then I began to open up maybe a foundation and I began to group young people. I began to teach because this is what I'm all about, more than what the legal fraternity wants me to be. And that's what this teaching for today is about, finding your deeper in you and what is it that you have and how is it that you can actually be able to even use your talent so that it begins then to bring money into you and begins to sustain you because that's how I believe it, it, it should have always been done. This also reminds me in terms of um, how other countries are able to run even the, 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 the area what they call of, 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 of education, you know, there's higher education and, you know, there is also um, what they call when you are still at school from primary into high school. Um, that part of it is very key in how you shape and you are able to build up a child. And in some other countries I hear in Cuba, in how they are able to run it, they actually look at your particular talent that you have. And then they begin to start grouping you to be clusters of people that are of the similar things that you like. So if you happen to be in, in primary school, their curriculum talks to you understanding and them understanding where exactly, what is it that you are all about? What is it that you want? What is it that you like? And once they figure it out, before other people, you know, in, in the very olden days, they used to say there's something called higher primary so which means you move from your lower grades into a little bit of higher grades even though you are still not yet graduated either they call it college or into high school or anything like that and before you even split and go there they begin to understand that you are actually gifted when it comes through to numbers so they begin to channel you in the direction that will talk through to things that are pertaining numbers in finances and anything like that and if you are gifted in terms of art so anything like that, they begin to group you into that. So they start separating you at that particular age when they see that this is what you are all about and this is what your talent is all about. So that you don't become frustrated, even at school, trying to compete with kids that are so good in math and science because they wanna become scientists, they wanna become doctors. They, 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 they are more prone to, to, to biology and all those things because it's just them and to them it comes a second nature. So instead of you sitting in the classroom and getting frustrated that you are not getting straight A's because you are simply an artistic person and you are not necessarily an A student when it comes through to, to maths or to science, other kids who are also artistic can also be good in maths and science, but they begin to understand what is it that you are all about and what is it that is your talent and they group you with that so that you lose the frustrations at the very young age. And then you begin, by the time you get to, to higher education learning or by the time you get to high school or by the time you get to college, you are already grouped with the like-minded people. You know exactly what is it that you want to be able to achieve and you begin to work towards that. And that's what we're gonna be talking about here, finding your purpose, finding your destiny, finding what is it that you are all about. And that's what today's teaching is all about. We're gonna look just at a few examples, just so that we bring it home. We're gonna start with biblical examples and then we're gonna have some other examples that are not so biblical, but I hope it's able to, to channel you into the direction of finding and understanding your purpose. So let's look from a biblical perspective. The prophet Jeremiah, and he's, he's just one of those guys that I happen to have studied you know, um, 
in the Bible. And I'll tell you just now because I decided just to bring my um, study Bible that defines who this particular individual is all about. But let's look here first on this particular one. So I had to find some formal pictures because I think, you know, um, when you are doing a presentation, it works more with images and, you know, um, less wording and all of that. So I tried to be able to find almost like a cartoony um, picture so that it, it just still is able to keep it in that particular element. So according to uh, Google, this is what uh, Prophet Jeremiah looked like, most probably in his young age or anything like that. And let's look at what um, is being said about him. So if you read in the book of Jeremiah chapter one, which is the very first chapter, verse five, you can read other chapters as well, and I'll encourage you to do that. I'm just here going to actually focus only on verse five. He says here to Jeremiah, I knew you. Okay, he says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. So in other words, this is now believed to be God who is speaking through to Jeremiah to make him understand that he knows who he is and what he is all about. And I pulled this particular picture on purpose because you are finding this bigger finger holding this particular small finger. You would assume that this is a parent and the baby, you know. And, um, but here, I want you to take that particular example. You can also interpret to say, you know, they are there to hold your hands, to be able to guide you. And this is what the Lord is then beginning to say to Jeremiah. But I just want to be able to read this through to you. Um, I'm hoping it's not going to take long. It's just going to take a little bit of while. And this is my study Bible. So it is a um, application study Bible and it's New King James. And I love it so much because I always refer back to it um, and hear what this particular scholar who wrote it had to say. And you can also find a lot of study Bibles that you can find and other scholars comments um, now that you've got even internet. But I'm just going to read um, here what they describe about Jeremiah. Then I'll go into making you understand how he got to understand what his purpose is all about and how somewhere, somehow he couldn't align with it. And hence this particular scripture had to come to him so that he begins to understand that. So here it is actually um, written that um, the book of Jeremiah or Jeremiah came about, um, he ministered under the five kings of Judah. As we know that Israel um, was divided into different tribes. So there was a tribe of Judah and there was also um, the other 11 tribes that you can be able to find these different tribes, tribes of Manasseh, um, who was the, the, the son of, 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 of Joseph. Um, you will also find different tribes that are there. So he happened to be born around that particular time. And it's important because when you begin to understand also the period in which you are born, you will begin to know and understand what is it that you need to be able to fulfill. And so it describes here that around this time, the scholars argue that um, Israel was sliding quickly towards destruction and eventually was going to be conquered by Babylon. So in other words, Israel was about to go into, the slave, uh, into a period of slavery and they were about to be captured by King Nebuchadnezzar who was then in charge of, of Babylon. And that was um, a land of slavery. That was not a good land to, to, to find themselves, them as Israel, but they found themselves there because it was part of the punishment because God brought a couple of prophets for them to speak to Israel and tell them, this is not the direction that you need to be able to go, but this is the direction that you actually need to be able to go. So you, you will begin to find that Jeremiah was basically born at the time where God just knew that all I want you to be able to do is to fulfill this particular mandate while you are still here on earth, okay? Um, it also says here, I'm just gonna, gonna read, I'm gonna pull up just a few things here, what it says about um, the, the prophet Jeremiah. It says for 40 years, um, he served God as God's spokesperson to Judah. So for, for 40 years, he was just sending the message of God as the prophet. 
And, um, but it says here, but when Jeremiah spoke, nobody listened. Now this is the nobodies, it's Israel itself. They did not listen because then God brought Jeremiah for them. Um, but Jeremiah, when Jeremiah spoke, no one listened. Um, consistently and passionately, he urged them to act, but nobody moved. So urging them to act is obey God, move in the direction of the Lord. He, he continuously did that, but nobody bothered to be able to listen. And this, I liken it to, you know, Christ, when he came here on earth, he, he came and he preached the gospel and he said, this is what I want you to be able to do. But it seems like not a lot of people wanted to hear and listen, and especially those that he came for, which are then the Jews. And it says, yeah, um, and he certainly did not attain material success. That's how um, this particular scholar is able to define it. Um, he says, here people defined him as if he was poor and he underwent severe, um, deprive, um, under severe deprivation and to deliver his prophecies, right? So he deprived himself of quite a number of things for him to be able to deliver his prophecies. He was thrown into prison, according to this particular scholar, as you are reading through to the chapters, because people didn't really wanna to listen to what he had to say. I'm just gonna pick um, things that I think will be relevant. So here it also says, um, Throughout his life, Jeremiah stood alone, declaring God's message of doom, according to how people define it, announcing the new covenant and weeping over the fate of his beloved country. His eyes and uh, in the eyes of the world, Jeremiah was not a success. So now this is in the eyes of people. He was not a successful person. So people will define you and say, I ah, know this one is not important. This, is, this one is not a success. This one is not this. This one is not that. In the eyes of people, it says here, yeah, he was not necessarily somebody who is a success. But in God's eyes, Jeremiah was one of the most successful people. So you look now at what this scholar is saying. People are defining him in a different way to how God perceived and defined him in according to the purpose that he wanted him to do. So one of the key things that I'm picking up here as I'm reading this book of Jeremiah is that you don't necessarily need to be defined by how people see you and how people want to be able to react. You need to be defined by the creator. Are you doing that which you've been created for here on this earth? Are you able to fulfill that? So that was key. So here it says that in the eyes of God, Jeremiah was successful. In the eyes of people, he wasn't because it wasn't somebody that they actually wanted to, to, to listen to. In all the, he, yeah, okay, so let's read again. But in the eyes of God, Jeremiah was one of the most successful people um, in all of history. So in all of history of Israel, he was one of the most successful prophets according to God. Um, success measured by God involves, so now he, this scholar begins to define what is this particular success and how is it that it is able to be measured. So success that is measured by God is that of obedience and faithfulness. So in, in other words, he was obedient and he was able to be faithful um, to God at all cost. He was able to be obedient, he was able to be faithful to God at all costs, and that in the eyes of God, it deemed him as somebody who is very special, who is very important, and who can be able to be deemed as successful. And then it says here, yeah, um, regardless of the opposition um, and personal cost, Jeremiah courageously and faithfully proclaimed the word of the Lord. He was obedient to his calling. Jeremiah's book begins um, to call him a prophet and then he begins to describe here he was here it also says here in the basic theme jeremiah's message was very simple repent and turn to god because that's what he was designed for so when he was born he was born to be able to say to israel repent and be able to turn to god so that what god was trying to do to them is to prevent them to go through to the land of captivity which was babylon he was wanting them to turn around but they were not able to listen. And you will see 
Um, as you continue, even in the book of Jeremiah, you will find Jeremiah being frustrated at some stage. He got very frustrated with, with the Lord because he just felt that you have sent me for this, but these people are not willing to be able to listen and hear me out. So sometimes even in your own personal life, you'll find yourself frustrated thinking, but people are not willing to listen. Um, people are not willing to be able to recognize or anything like that. Do not be frustrated, especially when you know that you are on the path and on the journey with God has called you to be. That is what is important. So in chapter one, God affirms Jeremiah to say, I know what you are all about. It's almost like he knew what he would have to go through, that people wouldn't mind what he has to bring or anything like that. So it was almost like a preparation. So when he says to him, before I formed you, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. So in other words, I chose you for this particular assignment before the foundations of the earth. So this is what I also strongly believe that even before the foundations of the earth, before we're even formed in our mother's womb, God knows what we are all about. Whether you call it the higher power, whether you call it the creator, he knows what we are all about and why we are designed to be here. So in other words, your destiny is set before you even land here on this particular earth. Your destiny is already set. It's up to you whether you want to be able to follow it in the manner in which um, Christ wants you to be able to follow it in the manner in which God has, is able to play to, to, has planned it. So we all have our own separate destinies. We've been set apart. So you can't compare yourself to the next person. That's what I always tell people. Don't compare yourself to your friends, to your siblings, or to ever that you, 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 you deem to be very close through to you. There should be no comparison because we all hold something which is different and something that is valuable before God. So stick to that which you have been called for and you will see you will begin then to have the success in finding your purpose and finding what is it that you are here on this earth for. So over and above that, God still also still affirms um, Jeremiah, he says to him in Jeremiah 29, 11, this is now the scripture that is loved um, by all and it's a very familiar scripture. He continues now to encourage him, to say to him, and this is, was not the words that he was saying to encourage Jeremiah. He was giving these words, actually, if you read this particular chapter, he was actually giving these words to um, some of, of, of the leaders that have already been captured and put into captivity by Babylon, you know, um, taking them in as, as, as slaves and everything. So Jeremiah had to send this encouraging word to them to say, don't worry, it's actually going to be okay. But in hindsight, when I look at it, I'm like, chances are even the Lord was even encouraging um, Jeremiah himself to say, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So in other words, I know the plans that I have for you as Jeremiah, as you are looking discouraged that people are not listening to you. I know the plans that I have for you. But he now sends this word through Jeremiah so that he can speak then to the leaders that were already beginning to be captured by Babylon into slavery, which is now the children of Israel. And he begins to say to them, don't worry, the Lord knows the plans that he has for you. And God still reassures them to say, if you can turn away from the wickedness and stick to the commandments or the principles that I've given through to you, then your future is looking bright. Then there is hope for you for the future. Then there is hope for you to be even be able to prosper in the future and going forward. So God reassures them. So which is the reassurance that you will also get for yourself. And I'm reassuring also myself to say, he knows that his plans are there to prosper you and not to harm you, provided you are able to obey the kingdom principles, provided you understand what they are all about and what is it that is your purpose. Then he promises then a brighter future through to Israel. So in short now, if we look at this prophet Jeremiah, his mission was one. God created him to come and be able to tell Israel to turn away from their wickedness because they had forgotten 
from where he took them from, from Egypt into everything and taken them into the promised land. They continued to worship other gods. They continued to do things that were defiling them as how God wanted them to live. He kept on saying to them, he brought a, a number of prophets to say, turn away from that because I don't want to hand you over to Babylon, which is the land of slavery. And here, this was the assignment of Jeremiah. And if Jeremiah didn't know and understand what he was created for and what he was all about, he would have sat and been frustrated all his life. But you will see as you read towards the end of the books of Jeremiah, he begins to understand what was his purpose because God keeps on saying to him, do not be frustrated. This is what you are all about. You are designed to come and correct. You are just designed as what I've read in here to call these people to do it, to repent and move away from their weakness. And if you understand your path and you understand your purpose, then you are not going to look to the left and right and say, oh, no, this one's job looks glamorous. I would like theirs, you know, because theirs is easy. They just stand there and they speak and that's about it. No, we each have a purpose to be able to play here on earth. We each were designed to be here to fulfill a particular mandate over your life. And the reason for this, why I'm so passionate also about this teaching is that I am hoping that you do not miss that which God has called you for. That one day when you leave or depart or when this body becomes tired and you depart from here, you don't get to the other side. And when you get there, you get to be told, oh, by the way, this was your mission and this is what you were all about. And this is the life that you could have had only if you understood what your purpose is. So begin to search inside yourself to say, what is it that I begin to be able to live? I know that some of us are even still discovering this. You will never stop being in a stage of wanting to discover, but at least have some form of understanding. What is it that you are all about? And what is it that you are here on this earth for? And I'm just reminded, so I was giving a, a lecture on personal branding to students of, of, of Rosebank College. And I was saying to them, it's important to know and understand who you are, what you are all about, what are the type of things that you are willing to be able to do and what are the type of things that you are not willing to be able to do and how you need to guard your own personal branding so that it doesn't get to be tarnished, you know, and how social media becomes very key in us promoting ourselves and in our own so, um, personal branding that you don't want to find yourself posting things that are not relevant and you find yourself in a space where you don't want to be 10 years from now or anything like that because when recruiters go out there they search those social media pages to find out what is it that you are actually all about and what is it that your social life also exists because remember you can't separate yourself um, between yourself and your social life and your family. And you'll see when we um, draw up that will that talks to you about your own personal um, development, it, it speaks to you all in one. You are all of these things. It's just that they are then divided into different parts. So it's very, very important. If you don't know, and this teaching, I believe, then you will take away something as some form of a homework to say, what am I all about? What is my purpose all about? What is it that I'm designed here? And you know, I'm also reminded as I was putting together this particular teaching of how when we were small, when you get to, to class, the teacher will ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, and you begin to say like various things, oh no, this is what I want to do. I want to become, you know, a scientist. I want to be a nurse and everything. I wanted just to become a scientist and, and, and this is who I believed um, I, I wanted to be, to wanted to do, you know. And, and now that you are all grown up and you're thinking, hmm, these are the things that I actually desired when I was small, but as life channels me, it challenges me to things that I love and that I'm passionate about, that I'm happy to be able to fulfill. But what the teachers then were trying to be able to do, or the educators were trying to say, find yourself. What is it that you are all about? And you start aspiring into those things and start moving them towards those particular things. Some of us might have taken us longer. Some people, it might not have taken them longer. But begin to find your purpose. Begin to find what is it that you are all about. Okay, so born, born with a purpose, I'm still then continuing the second part of it. We're going to look at another now particular example that comes through um, from a Bible. 
Some people call him the prophet Moses. I call him Moses, whoever that you decide to give him, but he is another character that you are able to, 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 to find through in this black book called the Bible. Inside there, you find this particular prophet Moses. I tried to find pictures that could define people better, but I thought this one, because he's holding, you know, um, his stuff and he's got these 10 commandments, because he, he was one of, of the people that uh, the scriptures as they write, and they believed that the scholars, that he was able to sit and have a conversation with God and just go and sit on a mountain and have a conversation face to face with the Lord, that when he comes down from the mountain, um, he would even have a veil over his head because he was filled with so much glory that even the people or the children of Israel couldn't really approach him and be able to talk to him face to face because he had this radiance. He was just so radiant and he was just so bright because he was a man who went and was able to sit with God. So I thought this particular picture was, was a great one for me to define the Mount Sinai, which I believe that's where he's actually coming from. So we're going to talk about um, Moses, him, also understanding that he's born with a purpose. And here, the reason why I've chosen him specifically was just so that you begin to understand that at times you might think to yourself, I've deviated, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. But know that there is nothing that happens in your life as a coincidence. Um, I don't believe in that personally. And I don't believe that God is a God of coincidence because what he does is he fine tunes your life to go through certain circumstances. Yes, not all of them are designed to be there in your life. Some of them are lessons that you could learn from yourself, from your own mistakes. But some of the things are actually designed in line with your purpose. And I believe the birth of Moses was one of those that was designed with the higher purpose to say, one day he will come back to this particular nation and be able to free because he knew and understand how they worked. Moses was, was Hebrew, but he was raised by Egyptians. We know his story that um, his mother then had to send him away because they were, they were killing uh, boy kids that they were finding um, um, in, in Israel. And then his mother had to put him in the basket and he put him on that particular Nile River, hoping that um, maybe the, the, the king's daughter or somebody would be able to find him. And the king's daughter was able then to, to find um, Moses. So the princess was able to find him on this particular Nile River. And he takes this child as, and, and raises the child as if it was their own. You know, raise them with the Lord of, of, of Egypt, raise them with everything that is pertaining to Egypt. He dresses like Egyptians. He begins to walk the journey. Little does Moses know that his journey will actually be go back to that particular place of, of where you grew up and begin then to begin to fight these particular people and free your own people in there. And, and so that for me was, okay, so him going through to Egypt was intertwined it was linked to his destiny and he never knew and understood that but I guess when he began to walk the journey with the Lord he was the good and the right person to be able to approach Pharaoh because he grew up in that palace he understands how everything works he knows how which gods they were able to worship he is there so there is no ways that he would not, not have known how things operate there. So God takes him back. Because remember now he runs away as you begin to read the word and study the scriptures. He runs away from Egypt after he killed the Egyptians, which he felt that was mistreating you know, um, this Hebrew slave. And inside him, I think he knew that he was a Hebrew and hence this thing was touching too close to him. So he does that and he, and he kills this person. Then he begins to run away, but then God brings him back there and say, you are the right candidate. Because remember you are born with a purpose. You were born for this. And for you is for you to lift up my people from where they are in slavery and move them to the land that I am promising them the land that I have sworn even to their father Abraham, to their forefather 
Isaac and to their forefather Jacob to say, I will move them from there and give them this wonderful land that they began to live in. And that is now uh, born with a purpose and, and Moses beginning to understand his purpose. So let's understand then his particular calling. So if you read in the book of Exodus chapter three, verse seven to eight, it says, and Moses said, sorry, and the Lord said, not Moses, and the Lord says, um, I have surely seen the affliction. And in some versions it says, I've heard the cry or I've seen um, how my people are not treated good. He says, I've, I've surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. And where was Moses role, raised? In Egypt, until he was a, a young adult in my belief. Um, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. And for I know they are sorrow. So God begins to say, okay, I've heard the cry of my people who are now sitting in Egypt. And how they landed up there in Egypt is that Joseph is the one who then um, was there in Egypt and was able to move then Israel, his father, which is Jacob, into Egypt when they had favor with that particular king or that particular um king that was operating them, that pharaoh king that was operating them. So they began to build there, they began to grow there. And when another king came about who did not have that particular history, began to say, no, these people are becoming to be much more powerful. God begins to bless them. They are now in this particular foreign land. He begins to be jealous and then he puts them into slavery. Then the Lord then hears the cries of his people. He wants to free them from there and take them back to the land where I believe most probably Jacob used to be and where Abraham used to be and where Isaac used to be, the land of their forefathers, and which is the land that was flowing with milk and honey. This is what the Lord promises them. So now Moses begins to have a life journey of that. He is born now into this thing and his purpose is to be able to fulfill exactly that. And he, he, he starts giving excuses and you'll find that even with Jeremiah, he starts telling the Lord to say, no, I cannot be able to speak. I'm still young. I'm still in my youth. What are people going to say and everything like that? It's because they haven't began to, be, to find out what their purpose is all about. But with Moses, he says the same thing. No, no, no. I stutter. I'm not able to speak to these people. Who am I going to say same send me, you know, and God says, I am the Lord your God, I am who I am, just tell them you I am, you know, has, has sent me, and he begins to tell them and give them confidence, he doesn't have that much confidence, he begins to say, I will link you up with your brother Aaron, and if you take him with, you will begin to walk the journey together, but you begin to then study the life of, 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 of Moses from Exodus up to until Deuteronomy, I think we he, he, he last ends it before he hands over through to, to Joshua. He is a Moses that now fears going back through to Egypt, but that's his destiny and his purpose. He begins then to fulfill that. I always say the Moses that now you find in the book of Deuteronomy is a completely different Moses, according to me, because now he, he has begun to understand his purpose. Yes, he is now in his old age, but he understood now his purpose. He begins to tell the children of Israel to say, hey, these are the laws. These are the principles of God. You stick by them. You continue with them. And this is what the Lord promises to be able to have from me. Do not, you know, he starts speaking with that confidence. And now this is the Moses, I don't know how many years later, because now he's close to um, reaching, excuse me, his deathbed. He begins to speak about that. He begins to tell them uh, about all of these things and everything like that. So Moses's purpose was to be able to move the children of Israel into the promised land. And chances are he would have seen the promised land himself if it wasn't for the shortfalls that he had of anger, issues of anger that he needed to have been dealt with and which then deprived him to entering into this particular promised land. So we begin to see that his purpose was exactly that to be able to fulfill any the role that he played within the children of Israel. And, you know, the tiredness that he had to go through, that it was part and parcel of his purpose. He couldn't be able to run away from it. Him, it was able to go and listen to the voice of the Lord, come back and be able to tell it to this particular people. Even when at times when even his own brother and, and, and sisters, his own siblings begin to undermine him and say, who do you think you are? But, you know, um, Cora and the sons begins to say, who do you think we can also hear? 
you know, from God and everything. And God begins to punish them to say, but this one I have chosen for myself. So these are just a few examples that I'm bringing about to say, understanding your purpose. Begin to search within your life. What is it that I'm supposed to do here on earth? What is it that I'm supposed to, to fulfill? Because you can't just wake up and say, okay, I've woken up. This is me. And then you sleep and then you were born and then you die. But there is nothing in between that you were able to fulfill. It just can't be. Um, you need to be able to find out what is it that you've been made for? What sort of purpose is it that God has created you for? And you begin to live like that. Then you begin to fulfill that which you have been called for. Whether whatever form of talent that um, God is able to give through to you, whatever form of talent, whatever form of gifts, whatever form of everything that you do have, to be able to fulfill a kingdom mandate purpose that's according to me. And that's you beginning to finding out what is it that you are all about? Okay, let's move over to fulfilling your purpose. Um, how is it that you begin then to fulfill your purpose? And I'm just going to pull this one particular example. Um, I had a few that I wanted to pull, then I thought, okay, because I'm going to do this in two part, chances are I'll bring in the other example in, in, in the next uh, part of teaching that we'll have. And this particular individual stood out for me purely because so they are now late, purely because they are this individual that lived according to me what their purpose was actually all about. They might not have um, left this at, at the age where they are supposed maybe to be able to have lived, but they were able to fulfill their purpose in the period of time that they were able to, to be here on earth. So this for me is to say from the day that you are born up to until the day when you are arrested, what is it that people are going to be talking about you? So I began to say here, what do you want to be remembered by? What is it that you want people to know you are all about this? So when, when Landy is no more, what is it that people need to be able to remember? What is it that she brought? What difference did she be able to make in the smaller circle or even the bigger circles, wherever you are, you are having a purpose. And that particular purpose, are you able to fulfill it? When you are fulfilling that purpose, it should be able to make a difference in terms of the things that you begin to be re remembered by. You know, as I was saying that uh, um, I happen to have given some, some form of a talk to these particular students. And I started pulling up pictures of people. I started up pulling up pictures like of, you know, Oprah Winfrey, for example, just putting up a picture and I said, who is this person? They said, oh, this one is Oprah Winfrey. And I said, what does she do? They said, no, she runs a talk show. And, you know, she's a speaker. She is this. She, she begins to fulfill her purpose in, in line with her career in line with what she's actually called for and her God-given talent or the talent that she has, she is able to utilize that to be able to gain some form of financing. And this particular talent that she has begins to finance her and it begins to live, she begins to live by it and it begins to sustain her. That is somebody who's starting now, who is I, in my view, begins to live a fulfilling purpose, that which he has been called for. So you stay in your lane. Chances are you wouldn't find him to wanting to, to detect to somebody now to say, hey, by the way, I, I am here now in South Africa, I'm a South African, and this is how South Africa should run. No, she knows all what she's all about is a talk show. She knows what she's all about is to talk to people. She's got that talent that when she speaks to people, people begin to, to, to open up. They begin to understand. She even speaks to people that you never even thought other people would like to speak about. And I mean, at some stage, she even had an interview with, with Al Kerry to actually find out what is it in the, in the inner side of things that you'll be able to think. So, I mean, she has done the, the, the same with um, Prince Harry's wife and Meghan, you know, and they begin to tell stories. So she is also a good storyteller and she, she, she's able to unlock such things. That for me is somebody who's beginning to fulfill the purpose because she's running within her own lane. She's fulfilling this while she is happy and comfortable in it and it's part and parcel of a career. So what is it that you wanna be remembered by? Other questions that came to heart. What will be written in your, um, your, your, your eulogy? What is it that is gonna be written with you? Um, eulogy talks to 
what is it that when you are gone, that people are going to be able to present and say, this person was all about? Are they going to say, oh no, no, that one was born and then passed on, went to <laughs> this type of schooling, finished schooling, did this, and that was it, you know, had kids, got married, had kids, uh, that was it, you know. So what is it that will be written about you when you are no more? What sort of difference were you able to bring? Were you able to do that which you are called for? And that is why we need to be able to dig deep when we are looking at these things in terms. So these are the questions that came to mind in terms of saying, when you are fulfilling your purpose, what is it that you are looking at? What legacy are you going to leave behind? And this for me is very important because then legacy is something that you are not only living, you begin to understand that you are not only living for yourself, but you are living for other people that are coming even in future, that you are leaving this legacy for them. You know, I always look at people who are running businesses who are saying, I'm not only running and building this business for myself, but I'm now handing it over. People would say it's a second generation or third generation business or fourth generation business or fifth generation business that they're able to run. And there's one of the other good shows that I love um, also watching on TV that has to do with, with, with bakery and his name is Buddy. And, and you know, it's, it's, he's now the second generation of bakery business that he's actually able to run. So his dad was able to leave them with this particular legacy of which he also took from his mother. And they begin then to run it as a, as, as a family business and begin to even pass it on. You could see how he now passes on the baton even to his children while he's still alive, to teaching them the discipline of business, including his nephews, including you know his nieces. They begin to groom them into this particular business. So it becomes then a legacy. It's not only about uh, this is what we are all about, but even future generations begin to benefit from it. They know now that in whatever career that I choose and in whatever direction that I choose, um, there is something that is linked with, with me um, being somebody who goes and study maybe culinary or do something like that because it, it's something that runs within then our family or it's a purpose that we need to be able to fulfill within our family. Not all kids are going to follow that, but I'm just giving just a typical example for you to begin to understand what legacy are you leaving behind? Are you leaving a legacy of, of, of leaders, of leadership or anything like that? And you will see that in all families, you begin to see a trend to say, you know, family of doctors you know everybody who is born out of this family even if the other kids can decide to do finance or they can decide to do law or anything like that and, and be in different fields but in this particular family there will always be somebody who is the doctor and it runs through like that or a family that is from um a family of a uh, uh, legal fraternity who are lawyers and they begin to be able to breathe that because you begin to be able to pass that on. So you need to ask yourself, what sort of legacy am I going to leave behind that I will be remembered by? So when people think of you, they would say, ah, that individual was such a giver, was such a person who worked with the community. There's nobody who had such commitment as that particular individual. So those are the type of examples that we could look at. So this individual I specifically can relate to. And I brought him up because I know he has got, he's somebody who is fulfilling his kingdom mandate um, purpose because he sits with the mandate that says spiritual part of it, but also in the physical sense, who am I? I'm an activist, I'm able to fight for those who do not have a voice. I'm the voice of reason, I'm the voice who's able to speak and everything like that. So Martin Luther King Jr. is the person that I'm bringing here. And he's one person that I, 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 I always look at his quotes and include them when I, I would bring up um, some form of presentations or anything like that. But he became a character that I could relate to now because in his own right, he was a minister, minister of the gospel. You know, but at the same time, he didn't just say, oh, no, because I'm just the minister of the gospel, it doesn't mean my voice cannot be able to help. He intertwines that, his particular calling with his particular destiny, with his career and what he's able to do. So he is an activist. He is a voice of reason. He used to be able to challenge and stand for the Black um, Americans 
those who are sitting there in America and challenge the status quo and challenge quite a lot of things that he felt were not good, but he was challenging things in a form of love and respect. And one of the quotations that I put out on here, he says, I have a dream. So those who know Martin Luther King Jr. says, I have a dream. When you say I have a dream, you already know his name comes up to mind. His picture, we already been making sure that you, you are finding them in the social media. They made sure that we found them in the social media. Chances are we were born when he, he was already gone, you know, but he, his legacy still lives on. He, you can find what he's all about. Even when you read through history, when you Google, you are able to find information. He says, I have a dream. And part of his dream was that, that for my four little children, will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color, by, by the color of their skin, but by, um, but by the content of their character. So in other words, he used to say, I am living big. One day I am dreaming that America will be like this. One day I am dreaming that it will be a nation and a city that moves like this. This is now somebody who begins to understand the vision, the purpose, what they are all about. And he's putting it out there. He's somebody who challenged everything. And I mean, if you go and you just search history on how he was able to influence the marches that they used to be able to have and people used to attend them. And he was such an influential individual who lived according to his purpose. He understood what he was all about and he never questioned it, but he pushed forth. Other people will say, I know you are talking too much. You, you should just you know, keep quiet. No, but if your character is like that, chances are you are also a voice that needs to be out there for people. Chances are you need to be, you know, an activist. You need to be able to talk. I could pull a lot of examples here, you know, in South Africa people that we can actually also be able to live up to. But for now, I just decided to just pull this particular individual and you can be able to pull examples of your own. He had this dream that he wanted to see it fulfilled. And I'm sure that now his daughters or his grandchildren were able to, to live up to that particular dream that he had. He continues to be able to say, I have a dream that one day this nation will be able to rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. Um, we hold this truth to be self-evident that all men are created equal. So equality is, is, is what he wants it to be able to see, to say everybody should be equal. Everybody should be there. There shouldn't be discrimination. He's somebody who that was standing up to say, let's not discriminate based maybe on the color of your skin, based on, on, on the gender, based on whatever. But here he begins to say, I have a dream that one day we'll begin to live and become equal. And I would like to believe when I'm looking at um, what's happening right now, even in, in America, this particular dream begins to live on because now inequalities begins to be, uh, you know, uh, addressed and everything like that. But this is an individual that stood up and was able to do it. And we are still on the topic of fulfilling your purpose. How is it that you are actually able to fulfill your purpose? And this is another quote that I decided to pull out of him. He says, let no man pull you low enough to hate him. So in other words, he is one person who didn't believe that in hatred. He wanted to promote, and you'll see the particular quotes that begins to talk about that you begin to, to love and you begin to be equal. Those are the things that he was all about and he was fighting for. And that's what I believe his purpose was all about. And he didn't step outside of what he felt he was actually called for. He pushed, I think, against all odds. But this is a man, when I look at what is happening right now, I begin to say he starts to live up to his purpose. We can have multiple examples of people who understand what is it that they are all about. Another example that I'll pull, maybe that we do have here in South Africa, is that we also have the, 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 the likes of um, Madiba, for example, who was able to fulfill his purpose as a leader to say, I need to be able to move this country, South Africa, into some form of democracy, you know, and they were willing to go into prison and lay their lives with the struggle to make sure that they do fight for a better future. 
even of, of, of their children. Even within here in South Africa, you can pull even the likes of, um, I watched an, an interview, um, a podcast um, interview of, of, of Julius Malema, who says, I live, I eat and I breathe politics because this is what I know. And you wouldn't find him speaking or addressing anything that is outside of politics because this is who he is and he believes this is what his, his journey and his purpose is actually all about. You would see that these are the people that have their careers, they are calling, their purpose intertwined and they begin to be able to live according to that. There's plenty of examples that you can pull from. But here I'm trying to drive you to say, you need to begin to fulfill and live your purpose. And for you to understand what is it that you are all about, ask yourself these three questions. What do you want to be remembered as? What will be written in your eulogy? Uh, what legacy are you leaving behind? So that you begin to understand what is it that I'm all about and how is it that I can actually be able to fulfill my purpose. And I hope this gives you some form of understanding. Okay, let's be able to move on. This is now most probably the second last slide before we conclude. Um, building a self-image. So as I said, this is a two part. So I wanted the first part to talk mostly about your purpose and how you look at yourself as an individual and how we can link it up with examples that we are bringing through of people who, who, who are living according to what they were called for and according to their purpose. So here we are talking about building a self-image. And when I'm bringing this thing through and I haven't made it to bring certain things at a certain time. I wanted to, for it to reflect all at once so that you find an opportunity to also have a look at it and begin then to be able to study it. So on my right hand side, from what I'm seeing from the screen is what we call a, 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 a wheel of, um, that has to do with your personal development, you know? And this was basically inspired because I'm attending some entrepreneurship classes and one of the coaches um, that came in and was able to give a lecture. In terms of growth in your entrepreneurship journey, she spoke about this and, you know, it triggered something in me in terms of uh, building up your self-image and building up in line with what your purpose is. So we'll come back and we'll touch on it. And, and, and that's what I found on the system of, of change with talks to that. And let's look at the scripture-based part of it and how is it that we can actually be able to link it together. So um, one, for me, pulling out all these seven things was for number one, building up your self um, esteem first. So this is according to the scriptures. We're not going to go into it. So read these books yourself. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse seven to eight. Begin to start building you as an individual, because I always say you start with yourself first before you can start even um, helping other people. And that is why this particular wheel on the side is, is also labeled a personal development um, growth wheel, because it talks about that. So building up your self-image, build yourself towards the purpose which God has called you for, is also building up with your self-esteem. And here, when we talk self-esteem, remember when we go back to the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, there already the creator is giving you a self-esteem. Already the creator is, is, is saying through to you, be confident because you are made in my own image and in my own likeness. I've already given you dominion and power over um, the universe is what I've said, you know, what it is, the earth, the seas, as well as, 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 as the heavens, which is the skies, the galaxies. So that self-esteem needs to be able to come from there because you are already a, 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 a stewardship to things that are pertaining on this earth. You've given, given power and authority over. Identifying your strength, um, your strength, what is it that you are good at? That's why I always say when you go back to say, they always say to you when you were small, when you, when you, wanna, when you grow up, what do you want to be? You know, and you see kids graduating from lower grades, you know, from kindergarten, anything like that, you know, saying, I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that, or I want to be a business person like my dad. 
what is it that you feel are your part of your strength? And I always encourage this, especially to career development and career building, whenever I happen to give talks that are talking to your career, understand your areas of strength. Don't work towards your weaknesses because then it's gonna to begin to frustrate you. When you know this is what you are good at, I have discovered in terms of me personally, my purpose that I am good in speaking, I am good in talking. And that all, those are part of the strengths that I am happy to be able to play into at any given stage. Trust me, you can wake me up in the middle of the night and say, talk, I won't hesitate to open my mouth and talk because I can talk and talk and talk. So if you know what your strengths are, identify them, begin to build your purpose with, with that and your self-image and your self-branding towards that. Understand what your weaknesses are. What are your shortfalls? What are the things that you short fought at that you are not able to carry through and begin to work on those things. Don't leave them sitting there as weaknesses because weaknesses are opportunities of also becoming strengths, you know, they are opportunities that you can actually be able to build up. What is it that is sitting in your weaknesses uh, buckets? Because we are all not made, you know, perfect. But understand what are those weaknesses and how can you work best in terms of, of you know, identifying them and be intentional about it. And, you know, when we are talking now on this side of, 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 of the part that talks to, you know, the, the personal development will, you know, the, what, where is it that you are lacking? So this particular woman, and I need to be able to honor her, Dr. Sajwayo, she was actually addressing this particular part. And hers didn't have all these things. It had other things like your career, um, social development and all of that, but it's still in the same line, you know? What is it that you are weak at? Are, are you weak in terms of developing um, your, your relationships, you know? Because we are relational people. Because we are relational people, you will always find yourself in a relationship. There's no ways that you can live and exist here on this earth without a relationship because we are relational people. We relate in terms of even our relatives. That's where it's taken from. Relatives that we have, people that you are born with, your siblings, you know, and then you start developing even more your friends, your colleagues, you know, you start making meeting up because we are relational beings. If you know that your weakness area lies in the area of relationships, make sure that you start filling up. I was meeting up with, with, with a friend on, on Friday and say, you know, you need to fill up that, that, that bucket so that then it's able to, to help you to move and progress because you might find yourself frustrated even in the career where you are because there are other areas in your life that are beginning to question. So building up your self-image is important when you begin to also building up to finding your purpose and fulfilling that which you were called for. What is it that are sitting there as your strength as what we have identified and building up yourself, you know, esteem. Personal development is what it talks to. How is it that you begin to build your self-esteem? Um, some people find building their self-esteem, it's how you are able to define it. Some people find building their self-esteem, whether they, they are able to study more or finding building their self-esteem in investing, you know, in, in, in other things. Some of them find building their self-esteem by just having a quiet time and taking a book and reading. Some of them, they find building their self-esteem, maybe just being in a social space in the social surroundings where you can actually just be able to talk to people and relate with. So what is it that you are personally working towards and be intentional about it? You know, um, excuse me. Um, so we talk about identify your strength, your weaknesses and your, how you do, um, ideas and your habits let's be able to put it like that how is it that you are able to see they say a habit takes something to become a habit takes 21 days for you to be able to follow it what is it that are good habits what is it that are bad habits that you need to stop working on live a healthy lifestyle you know you could define it either way but I define healthy lifestyle by having a balance know when to strike a balance know when to strike a balance between your work and between your career and between your business and between everything that you have that is pertaining you and pertaining your life. It's not only about exercise. Um, it's not only about what you eat, but we know all those things are important, but 
Living a healthy lifestyle, yes, you do exercise, you do eat healthy, that is part and parcel of it because you still need to take care of this body so that you feel good about yourself and about this body. We've just experienced a break. I mean, I, I was on a break of about two months and I call it a, a, a medical break because it was a health break because my health was a little bit challenged and I really needed to take time off. I really needed to take care of myself. It was difficult because it's not an easy thing that you want to be able to do, but when you are faced with a, a health challenge, it forces you to actually be at the stage where you need to just to sit and say, I need to give my body rest. I need to give my body to listen to it. How is it that it's feeling today? Um, you know, I underwent surgery. What is it that I'm feeling today? Am I still in pain? And, you know, the doctors will advise and say, this is the time period that we want you to have off. And, and, and I laugh because I had quite a few um, colleagues of mine and friends who were phoning me and saying, how are you feeling and everything like that? And how I wanted to rush my healing process because I just felt I've got so much to do. I cannot afford <laughs> to be sleeping and not doing anything the whole day. But it's that particular time and season where your health requires that. You only have this body. When this body is no longer existing, how else are you going to be able to fulfill other things? So building up of your self-image, health is key and it's important. And I really learned how to let go. So they, they said to me, it's a six weeks healing process. It depends, you know, how your body is able to react. It could be more, it could be less depending. You know, and it, and, and it's exactly, I was just saying to a friend of mine, it's exactly five and a half weeks, I stopped feeling pain. And I think I was getting frustrated at week number two or week number three to say, no, now I need to be up and running. I need to do this. But I needed to have to listen to my body. What is it that it's saying through to me? And health is a key part of it. Also, mental health. How is it that you are able to keep yourself sustained, even in your mental health? Health, how is it that you are able to balance things? Because it's important. You need your brains with. This body carries a lot because it carries the brains with. You need to be able to rest more. You must sleep within the timelines that you are actually able to give in sleep. People would say, yes, you can get away, ah, man, when you are an adult, five hours sleep, four hours sleep. It depends on the season that you are at. I remember when I was studying quite a lot, I almost probably get away with like three, four hours sleep. I would say, okay, that's enough for me to actually carry me through the day. But at times you are also draining your body, but you can only do that up to a certain period and function up to a certain period because otherwise you're going to burn out. So you need those particular breaks that you can actually be able to take. You need to rest your body well. You need, your mind needs to shut down and it needs to be able to rest. I began to learn how to make my mind to actually shut down and begin to rest so that everything just keeps quiet. It's part and parcel of you building and developing yourself. It's part and parcel of you understanding and knowing how far you can be able to push and how far you cannot be able to actually be able to push. So these are key things as you are building and understanding your purpose and fulfilling your purpose. You fulfill it with all these things in sync. When the other part is lower, you begin then to feel even the suffering in your mentalness, in your mental healthness or anything like that. Let's say, for example, money is lower. You begin then to start thinking a lot of what else is it that I'm going to be able to come about? I need to think of this, you know, and, 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 and think of that. And, you know, maybe my budget was not good this particular month. How else can I be able to improve it? So those are the type of things that we are able to talk about. Also. We have put in here to say, shake off your pride and be clothed with humility. And that's what it's required from us from the word. And you can read this from the book of First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. But I always believe, and, 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 and if you read in the word, God always says he is, um, he likes the ones that are humble, that are meek. And Christ's character is of that. He was meek and he was humble. And he was not so a judgmental person is how religious people, we tend to be those who are religious. We tend to be much more judging of people and saying, yeah, but this is not, but he was meek and he had humility. And he had a place and a time to be able to address certain things then that will be able to take place and happen. So humility 
is also quite key as you are also developing this particular circle, as you are also able to develop it, your spiritual part of it is important. How far is it and how far are you able to feel it? And it's up to you. What is it that you want to be able to define as spirituality? A lot of people these days are defining spirituality different to say, this is what I incline to my spiritual, but just know you are a spiritual being. At the end of the day, you're going to have to fulfill some form of part of spiritual being. So if you're not going to be able to do that, um, the emptiness thereof, it makes you not to be able to function as a full person. Whether you decided your part of spiritual being is to be able to serve whatever that you decide to serve, but decide you are a spiritual human being. So that part of it, you also need to take part of it. That's why I included this one specifically because it also talks to the spiritual part of it. As I said, we are a three apartheid being. You are a spirit, you have a soul and you live in a body. And this, you are always this three in one person that needs to be able to function. And for you to be able to function properly, even in your spirit, take care of your body, take care of all those particular things and realize who you are in the eyes of God. We just read just now now about the story of Jeremiah, how people defined Jeremiah and how some of them had a lot to criticize on Jeremiah that it even worked on his self-esteem, I believe at some stage, because it would. I mean, if you are brought to people and those people do not actually want to be able to listen, uh, what are you there for, you know? And, but according to the one that has created you, you are doing a good job because you are being obedient to him and you are telling um, these people exactly what he, he wants you to be able to do. You know, I'm, I'm also reminded of the story of Jonah on, on how he just landed up uh, taking a short lift because he just didn't want to fulfill that which he was called to be able to do. And that is why he goes away and says, no, I am not going to go to that city of people who do not want to listen. And I am telling you right now that if they happen to repent because you are such a good God, you are going to forgive them and you are going to make things to be better for them. And I'm going to look like I'm the liar. What I told them was not right, you know? And, 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 and so he goes and he does his own thing. He eventually comes back and he fulfills that to which he was called to do. He comes, he tells the people, repent. The Lord says, repent, you know, from your sins and everything like that. And they begin to do that and they begin to do right and they repent. <laughs> and then God begins to start doing that which is right for them and bless them. And Jonah's like, I want using things as funilies. This is what the things that I really do not like and this is not what I'm all about. I told you that they're going to repent and you're going to be so um, gracious to them. And, and show mercy. I look like now I'm a liar. I just brought in a word that is not there. But it's part and parcel of your destiny. If you need to be able to fulfill it, do it. And do it out there with the mindset of realizing of who you are. So realize who you are in the eyes of God, who is the creator. Your DNA is God. Remember, you are made in his likeness and in his image. And that's what you are all about. In all of this, that you are able to bring through. Draw strength from God's mandate as what he has said in Genesis 1, 26 to 28. That's where you draw strength to say, I am made in the likeness of God. I have got power and I have dominion, you know, and, and, and those are the part of things that you need to also be able to have a look at. Seven, it says here, you are three in one, which is what I've already explained. So don't give up when it's your darkest, you know, and that you can also read in the book of Genesis chapter one, verse one to three, because the earth was without form, it was darkness, there was nothing. But God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were there, you know, in that particular darkness. They lived and they existed. And so even in your darkest point, don't give up. Don't think that things, just because things are not going in the manner in which you have planned, therefore, you've got a right to be able to give up, don't. Just know that you need to be able to continue. And it doesn't matter how much you get it wrong and how many wrongs you get at that particular time. You wake up and you dust yourself and you continue. That is the journey of life that we have, that you wake up and you dust yourself and you are able to continue. And this is now building you, your inner self and your self image, which is very important and very key. And I have just put here at the bottom, your body is like a car. 
ne? carrying inside now this vehicle, you are carrying God, you are carrying Jesus, you are carrying the Holy Spirit. And not forget, there is also an unwelcomed guest <laughs> known as the devil. He's also there because he's also there to be able to manipulate even in terms of your thoughts to say, but do you think this is the right thing? I mean, he was there to try now right from inception when after God has done this creation because after he has created man, he was happy and created and in his likeness and everything. On the seventh day, now this is the sixth day, on the seventh day, he rested and said, now I'm done, you know. So after he's created uh, men and women, Adam and Eve and everything, this one comes and says, did God really say, you know, you must just know that those are the challenges that you're going to find. But within this journey, within this car, there's also this uninvited guest that is there that will always challenge, did you really hear him say, are you really sure this is what you are called for? That will always fight from you fulfilling your destiny at all cost. This particular individual, all forces will be against you from fulfilling that which you are called for. You know, when you are doing things that you are not called for, it is okay because it's fine for you to be able to waste your time. But when you're beginning to do that which you are called for, the enemy will come back and pull those forces. He will pull all stops to stop you from doing that which God has called you to do. So just know that your body is like a car that is carrying all these individuals inside. So you are a driver under the instruction of Jesus. So you, as you are driving, who is it that is giving you instructions? That spiritual part of it, if you are looking at this particular wheel here, who is taking care of that spiritual part? Who is the one that is telling you which direction you need to go? Remember, you've got all these bodies inside here that are instructing you. So which one do you want it to be able to say? And what is it that you want it to be able to say? But if you have now since received Christ, that is the person that begins then to be able to talk to you on this particular journey. So it's important, understanding your purpose. Understand that your purpose is not only just glued on things that you are going to do religiously so for the church. It's not only about that. It's about what is it that you have been called to do and make a difference on. Whether in whichever career and sphere that you decide to be in, that's what which you are called to be able to do. So some people will give it a blank umbrella, um, a blanket umbrella approach and say, ah, as long as I'm in church, it's fine. No, it is not okay. You need to go out there and be able to fulfill your kingdom mandate. What is it that you've been called for? You need to be able to go out there and be able to teach that which you've been called for. If part and parcel of your talent is for you to run a business, then continue to do so and have an influence where you are. So this particular wheel here for me, it's very key and it's very important for me that you look after your health because health is of importance, that you look after your finances, it's part and parcel of health. It's part and parcel of you living healthy in terms of looking at how your money is. You know, you might not necessarily be rich and wealthy, but financial health is very important. You know, and I'm just reminded of an example that was brought through by this one of um, the lecturers that was giving us a lecture on this. And he says, you know, she happens to have had a conversation of somebody who had achieved of somebody who happened to have um, achieved a lot. So they happened to have featured on their Forbes under 30, you know, to say this is what they've achieved in their career, this is how they balance things, this is how they balance their life. And, you know, you could say, yes, this individual is fulfilling their purpose and this individual has achieved that which they wanted to achieve. So they featured on that. They were able to come up with this particular concept and you know, they were able to move to influence and inspire businesses in terms of this. But this particular whole wheel here was not able to be fulfilled. Because guess what? As much as they've achieved in terms of their career, under 30 that they've done this and they've done this and they've done that, their family life, which is, we're talking about here, yeah, relationships, you know, 
uh, it could be romance, it could be your social life, it could be, that life was non-existent because they would come back home late. The, the, and, and, and remember now that this is the person who's achieving himself under 30. So they've just married when they were they're young and they having, you know, children. So they had a child, you know, who just also started school and didn't know who their father is, hardly saw who their father is and everything like that. He says this particular individual, I had achieved what I thought was meaningful to me to be able to achieve, but I neglected some of the things that are important that I needed to carry with me as I am working and understanding my purpose and finding my destiny. I needed to carry all these buckets with me. The buckets of family, the buckets you know, of, of making sure that the wife is okay. So he went and he bought a house and he designed and he did all of these things. And where he realized that actually he was empty on some of the other aspects is when the wife says, I'm not moving into that house. This is now the story that was related to, through to us. I am not going to be able to move into that house because I never asked you to buy a house. I've got a career of my own. Now, this is the wife. I've got a career of my own. I'm an engineer. I can afford. I can afford to get myself a house. And that's not what I was looking for. So I'm looking for you to be a husband. And at some stage, he decides, I'm going to take my child to school. And the child is like, no, mommy's just fine. Mommy's doing a great job. Because the child is not used to having a father that is there, taking them to school. I'm not saying that do not be able to want to do good by your family and do right, but balance. As you are building up yourself, try to find balance. It's a difficult one. I'm also still learning through it. But with the help of the instruction that you're getting from this particular person, known by the name of Jesus, who is helping you to drive this vehicle, you will be able to try and find a balance from your health. When your health is challenged, how else are you able to bring it up? When your finances are challenged, how else you can be able to bring it up? Your spiritual life, how is it that you are able to bring it up? And so that these, none of these buckets are empty because when they are empty, you happen to suffer as a human being. Excuse me, personal development, it depends how you define personal development. To other pe people that can be fulfilled to say, I've fulfilled my own personal development because you know what? I wanted to read a book a year and I've done that. And for me, I am fulfilled. So it's in the perspective in which you are putting all these goals to be able to achieve contribution. How is it that you are able to contribute not only to yourself, but to others as well? You know, working with communities, giving back, you know, to the communities and things like that. How is it that you are able to contribute to your society, to the community that you are living in, in making sure that there is a difference? Your surroundings, you know, um, all of those part of things, fun, not to forget to have fun. You know, um, I always say to young people, don't live like as if you are like 60 or 70, because by the time you get to that age, you're going to miss you being your youth. When are you actually going to go out there and have fun? And you don't have to be in your youth to have fun. You can continue to be able to have fun. And, you know, these are, when I looked at that particular wheel, I thought to myself, when I was scoring myself, I was like, oh, there's some areas where I know what I am lacking, you know, most probably the social part of it because I'm not such a huge social person. So, but I become intentional now in, in, in booking out those dates and, in, and be intentional in terms of, I will go out. And I'll go out and I'll be able to have fun because you know what? It's part of the things that I need to be able to fulfill as a holistic into myself. So we're going to stop here today in terms of building the self-image. And this is the teaching then that talks to finding your particular purpose. And as we conclude, I've put this particular image because it's got... This individual who's got their hands, they are working, and I know that they're working on flowers, but they are seeming to be working. There's a pair of scissors, there are ribbons, there are everything. Fulfilling your purpose. For me, it's something that is continuous work, that you're continuously working on it. I don't think that you'll get to a stage in your life where you say, I, I've, I've done it all, I've achieved. Here it is, you know. Even people who are still in their ages now of 90, 94, 96, it's a granny who still says, I'm still learning. 
I'm still wanting to learn how to be able to do this thing and master it. I'm still doing one, two, three, four, five. So it, it still is a work in progress journey in terms of fulfilling your purpose. But it's key that you begin to find what your purpose is so that you begin then to fulfill it as a life walking journey, as you are walking through it and begin to fulfill it. It is a work that you begin to put it all together. But what is key is that you should find that from the master, the creator who has created you in terms of finding that. So even with me, even with these Lali teachings, I really had to dig deep and say, what is it that is the purpose that I'm supposed to be able to be fulfilling? And what is it that is it that I'm called for to be able to do? So the birthing of these Lali teachings is part, of, part and parcel of me finding and fulfilling my purpose to say, hey, I've got something to be able to give. I've got something that I can be able to teach. I can, something that I've got to be able to tell a story to somebody and they can begin to understand it. So it's important that we begin to live a life of finding our purpose. And this is where we ended today. We're gonna to have a part two and I'm looking forward when we have that particular part two, but we're gonna have a break before we even then get to um, that particular part two. But this is what was important and what was sitting in my heart and I wanted to actually be able to share it with you. And again, I am reminding us that you've got any questions or queries, go to teachings at lalacombs.com, pop me an email, I can be able to revert back to you, or in any of my um, social media um, handles that I've got um, from Instagram to Twitter to anything like that, just drop me anything that comes to heart and then I can be able to, to attend to it. So we're going to end it here in terms of finding your purpose. Part two will then be able to follow where we're going to look at other different characteristics um, that we're going to study and look at. And I hope this journey will be, I hope these teachings will be able to help you as you begin to walk your journey and finding your purpose and understanding what is it that you are all about so that then you begin to fulfill that which you've been called for. What is it that you want to be remembered as? What sort of legacy are you actually leaving behind? And that is key because every single individual has it in them. It is a talent that is either sitting there, but fulfilling your destiny, it's something that was fulfilled before the foundations of, 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 of the earth. And we'll end it here. So I'm very excited to be able to say that Lale Communication, I mean, not Lale Communications, Lale te Teachings with Lale, we are celebrating our first year anniversary this year. So as we are celebrating our first year anniversary this year, it's going to be, I think, on the 19th of September. This is when this baby was, was birthed. And so I found it to be very pertinent and important that we begin then to celebrate that, our first year anniversary. So in the next teachings, you will see, as I will be able to post it online, I'm inviting a guest speaker, one of my mothers um, and one of my very good coaches, and she'll be able to come through and speak to, to things that are pertaining to the kingdom principles. And she'll be talking to, remember Genesis 1, 26 to 28, talks about dominion over the universe, over the seas, over the earth, and over the heavens. She'll begin to have a teaching that will actually talk to, and I've learned a lot from her, talking to how to be able to address the um, galaxy, the heavens, in terms of it to be able to listen to what you have to say, and talking to, you know, specifically to moon teachings, and what is it that, that, that the moon has, and what is it that we can be able to say through to the moon. And what is it that you are able to actually be able to achieve from this? So I'm looking forward to that. She's quite good with it. So we're gonna park the part two. Next time when we meet, we're gonna be celebrating our first year anniversary. And then we're gonna be able to go ahead with that um, particular teaching. And then when we meet again, we're gonna do part two that talks to finding your purpose. And then we're gonna conclude on that.